Hello again, welcome back to the channel. In this episode we're discussing uh, Nikkor AI and AIS lenses. To start off with, I've got a pre-AI camera here. This is a, a Nikkor Mat EL. And as you can see, the aperture information is passed to the camera by this mechanical coupling from this bit here called the rabbit ears. So as you select the aperture, this informs the camera what the aperture is. That allows it to work out the shutter speed. And if you've got it on the A setting, then obviously the camera can set the shutter speed. The cameras in the early days only really had aperture priority or shutter priority. They didn't have both like we have nowadays with the modern cameras. 1977, it all changed. Now this is a Nikon FE, not a particularly nice example of an FE. But as you can see, around the lens throat, there's this little lever here. Done away with the sort of connector that connects the older lenses. So this won't really meter with the older lenses, it will only meter with the AI lenses. You can fit the older lenses, because this thing flips out of the way. So you can fit a pre-AI lens on. but it's stop down metering then rather than full aperture metering. This is an AI lens, it's a 55mm nickel. And if you look on the back of the lens, you'll see there's a coupling ridge. And this connects to the camera. And it also has the aperture numbers of, on a second scale. And this is so it can be read in the viewfinder, just optically. And then to try and make that a bit brighter, they put holes in the rabbit ears now. So this is to let more light in. And as you change the aperture, that moves. So when you connect it onto the camera, like so, you can see how that bit's going to touch that and move it. So as you move the aperture, kind of hard to see that. Uh, that part moves, so that's how in the new AI system from 1977 it communicates the aperture information to the camera. There was no shutter priority. Um, the FE is another um, aperture priority camera, so it sets the shutter speed dependent on the aperture that you choose and that's how it communicates the aperture set on the lens to there. There's also no, in, no need to index these lenses, there's none of this moving it to tell the camera what the fastest aperture is or the largest aperture is on that particular lens. Okay, moving on from there, we have to say that the FE replaced the EL and the FM replaced the FTN. There was an FT3 model, which was AI, um, but the FM and the FE are direct descendants of the EL and the Nikon, uh, Nikon Mat FT. They're the same inside, it's just outside bodily, they're different. Uh, mechanically, they're very, very similar. Um, we also have an F3. This is the removable prism, but unlike the F2, when you remove the prism, when you remove the prism, you don't lose the AI prong. The AI prong isn't part of the prism like it is on the F2s and the F series cameras. On the F3, it's actually built into the body. But again, this is a aperture priority camera. Now, if we move forward to 1981. Things changed again with the introduction of the AIS. Now, AIS, oh, actually, I'll need that lens because I think that is an AIS lens. Yep, 81, the introduction of the Nikon FA, they wanted some way of controlling the aperture. On these earlier lenses, and this is a very early example of a very badly modified AI converted lens. This is my 85-18. This is the one where they butchered um, the back of the lens with a Dremel to make it into an AI lens, which is not ideal. 
but on these early lenses this mechanical lever here all it does is it just stops the lens down it just enables the aperture to close to the one that you've selected it doesn't offer any way of controlling what size that aperture is it's not a, a linear motion it's just open or stop down with the introduction of the AIS system that kind of changed AIS lenses are identified by this little notch just above where the locking mechanism sits where the pin sits in there so if you see this on the back of a lens it's an AIS lens and what that means is that this is a linear motion so the more you move this it's set to the lowest aperture the more the more that you move this the more the lens will stop down so the camera can then control the aperture and that enables things like a shutter priority so you can choose the shutter speed and the camera can set a corresponding aperture on the lens and things like program mode where the camera can set both the shutter speed and the aperture so that's the difference between an AI and an AIS lens is that in the S lenses this is a linear motion so the camera can control the aperture and that enables the Nikon cameras to have more automation modes which makes things a little bit more uh, advanced it's still an AI lens it still has the same meter coupling to let the camera know what aperture the lens is set to but obviously you set it to the smallest aperture of 22 if you want to use it in shutter priority and that allows the camera the full range of uh, of apertures to select maybe probably even part of apertures I don't really quite know how it how it works I don't have a uh, a Nikon FA or an FG I think it is as well um, that have those modes I'm not a big fan of automation I tend to shoot in um, manual or if I'm feeling really lazy aperture priority I don't really like shutter priority I don't shoot a lot of sport there was a way in the early days on the F2 um, of, of doing it. They had a thing called an aperture control unit, an EE aperture control unit. It was this clunking great motor that used to sit on the side and it would physically turn the aperture ring on the lens. I did have one a long time ago in the early 80s and that combined with a motor drive, the weight of it was unbelievable. That's before you put a lens on it. Um, so there was, they did have a shutter priority system on the F2. Very rare to see that aperture control unit now again that needed batteries it was electrical and that ran off a, a, a different kind of prism there was two sorts of prisms for the F2 but we go into more detail about that in the F2 video. So there you go that's the difference between AI and AIS. They work on the digital cameras provided they've got that feeler around the outside um, works on my D3, works on my D7000, they have those features but unlike these early cameras you can't push it out of the way, you can't remove it um, to allow you to use pre-AI lenses. Uh, so they're gradually sort of, all this old stuff is, is gradually being taken out of the new cameras apart from the very high-end ones. Right, thank you very much for watching, if you've got any questions or queries um, please drop me a line and uh, put something in the comments. I'll happily answer any questions about it. Um, Nikon EM, nice little cameras. E-series lenses are all AI. I think they're AIS as well actually. Yeah, AIS. But this is a Series E lens, 50mm. Pancake, nice little lens. Nice little camera actually. Well, this one needs a good clean, which we'll cover in a video. But again, on this you can quite clearly see, because the prism doesn't get in the way, how AIS and AI lens is coupled to the camera. And that's a feature that remained on lenses for quite a while. It's disappeared on the G series, the gelded lenses, the new cheap plastic lenses. It's disappeared on those. But AF lenses and AFD still have it. We'll cover that in the next video when we're going to do the AF lenses. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Like I say, any questions, put them in the comments. Hope to see you in the next one.